Hello, this is uh, Dave and welcome uh, to Equity Story. I'm with the Wolf and this is just a general share advice and not personal advice. Uh, Wolfie, it's all about uh, what's going on in America at the moment. It's all in the news. And, uh, uh, you know, if, if I go to the, uh, obviously, the, the NASDAQ looked terrible on Friday. The Dow, uh, again, looks like a bit like a start of a falling knife. The price action looks absolutely terrible. Now, um, they came out early in the, when the first came. Yellen said there'll be no bailouts. Uh, apparently, uh, if you've got two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you will be uh, of, you you will get that money back. Uh, however, this morning there's been a change of sentiment by from the uh, from the U.S. government. What's what's going on, Wolfie, with the SVB Bank? And this is the second biggest bank fail in American history. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, but when you look at back where how it was back in the in the day in the G GFC, size wise, it's much 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 smaller, right? And much more, I suppose, um, tech centric. So a little bit different, but it is the second biggest on record, right? So if you look at that, yeah, it's scary for sure. Um, and you know they could be, could have been fallout, but the Fed straight away, you know, trying to contain, um, trying to not have panic depositors getting withdrawing money because that's that's really what brings everything down when everyone wants to withdraw at the same time uh that's when things fail um so interesting enough this morning they go okay uh, i'm just reading the announcement for from the u.s government guarantees all silicon valley bank deposits money available monday right that that's that's the crux so i think that's going to stop hopefully some panic going on that's why the market hasn't collapsed this morning for us here We'll be interesting to see how the market reacts in NASDAQ and the US. Well, the US futures are, ra are running on that. Okay, that's good. So um, that's a good thing. Um, and there's another bank, I think they also Fed said we're stepping in, I think Signature Bank, much smaller. Uh, but again, you know, they just want to really stop everything, right? They just want to make sure that everything, and plus also they've said that their loans are going to be available. Any other bank, any other financial institution that might need it, it's available to them, to them right? So there you go. They're, they're trying to avoid this panic and possible failure um so from that point of view yes okay that's that's good but okay so that was the fallout so obviously we've got a lot of companies that have got a little bit of deposits in there um even my, oh, good old mark cuban uh the big investor has said ah i've got some money in there as well <laughs> what do we do but so hopefully that should alleviate some panic but you know what from from my point of view i'm thinking dave is this is this a good thing or a bad thing and i'm thinking this is a good thing it might actually first of all scare a lot of investors, right? Going, oh, well, maybe we should, uh, you know, not be exuberant, maybe start slow down. Maybe it will curb some inflation as well in this. And maybe it will start thinking about the Fed going, well, maybe we should stop raising the interest rates. Just have a look what actually, you know, how it's going to work with what wherever, wherever we've done already. So I think maybe it's like a circuit breaker. Give it a bit of a pause for everyone saying, okay, um, you know, we've got us problem here and, and this has been caused by high interest rates correct yeah that's yeah well the high interest rate was one a factor on of obviously having get the bank get into trouble right but then of course the trouble is when the, the all the positive withdraw the money straight away from the one guy that's what brought it to its knees but yes the interest rates absolutely was the trigger to get this bank into trouble now uh, because they've made the wrong bets on interest rates and so on so overall um definitely a problem Definitely, I thought it's, we're gonna we, without this bailout today, this morning, we'll probably see a you know a bit of volatility coming through over the next few weeks, and you know there, there could have been panicking going on a little bit going on in the US, but that seems to be stopped now. Look, what what to next, right, Dave? So what what happens next? I don't know. We're gonna have to follow the markets. From my think, I think I'm just gonna sit back and just see how this all goes on for the next few days. Uh, and yeah, so does it does it does, uh, but does this make inflation worse? The print the Fed just printing more money to to uh, this is uh, this is the whole problem, and this is why we're in such a mess because you keep supporting really poor uh, sort of companies decision. which are I, 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 yeah, yeah over leveraging and we keep bailing them out. Inflation keeps uh, it's it just kicks a can down the road, doesn't it? In a, in a word, it does, yes. But I, look, I, I, one hopes, right, that this is a small, small can, if you if you know what I mean, where if they left it, it could be much bigger problem down the track, right? So at least they uh, they jumped in pretty early to stop that, and maybe the fallout will be much smaller 
for the Fed, where there's not going to be too much printing of the money. Um, so at least from that point of view, I'm digging it. Uh, and let's, like I said, let's see how the market reacts. Let's see what the commentary is over the next few days. Remember, it's quite complicated over I, there. Yeah, it is complicated. But I think you, you, you're going to get the normal the rally tonight. But then <laughs> at, at the end of the day, once things settle down, yeah. suddenly everybody realizes these, these high interest rates. There's a lot of gremlins that's going to be yeah. pulling, uh, coming out of the woodwork, right? And this is why, you know, maybe it will shake a few people or shake a few investors going, okay, well, let's just ease off on the spending. Let's see if I was, just look at our own positions, you know, curb the spending, keep the exuberance, whatever, right? It might actually affect positively inflation as well, in a way. Um, and maybe also the interest rates will slow down, right? So it's it all up. Maybe this is a positive thing that, that just happened, a bit of a shakedown. All right. Well, I like your positivity, Wolf. Uh, it's always good to see. Um, and listen, at the end of the day, like you said, the market's not too bad. I mean, the futures were down 3%. And at the moment, we're not far off, but, you know, Positive. We, yeah, <laughs> well, down 0.5%, which is, we'll, we'll, we'll settle for that, Wolf. We'll... Yeah, exactly. That, that's pretty positive uh, when we're down 3% before the market starts. Uh, all right. Um, uh, but again, breaking trend at the moment. So yeah, we need yes. to we need we need to see some recovery there. I still now, think it's going to be volatile there. So I think that's the that's the main thing here for me. I still think it's going to be volatile, but it's not as going to be a crazy like I think it might might could have been, right? Oh, all right. Listen, there's a lot of sort of capital raises today, and I don't want to harp on with them. So it's all a you know a bit boring. But uh, I mean, we saw car, you know, you know, holding up actually pretty well. Wolf. Not looking, uh, not looking. yeah. Look, I, well, just 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 to give you an idea from car sales, the actual capital raise was at uh, 1995, right? Uh, and then the institutions were bidding for extra stock, uh, and they bid up to uh, to 21, I think 80 or something. So you can see huge demand for a very good story, uh, and they paid almost 10 percent above the actual capital raising for for you and me type investors, right? So I'm I'm quite happy. I'm hopefully going to pick up some stock for the funds at 1995. All right. Um, uh, uh, again, BLG, that's another race. And obviously, you know, you can understand why they've hit a bit of resistance. Not going any higher. Good time for them to raise. Um, DUG holding up reasonably well, Wolf, uh, not looking too bad. Uh, again, another, uh, I think uh, another company that could have been affected by the SVB fallout. And yeah. I think, uh, you know, they were down a little bit more earlier. And, and I think the news from the Fed is just, uh, help support the share price so calm the nerves a bit <laughs> calm them definitely definitely i mean if you actually look at that they're trading at uh 0.85 and uh yeah. yeah they didn't do too bad they've only been as low as 0.81 mm -hmm. um a big tin can any news there no look it's just another update from the from the company look it's just not for me it, it's just a struggle street isn't it for these guys so mm -hmm. we've always said it's not for us it's only a trading stock and he hasn't been it hasn't been a trading stock for a number of months. Now MEK, a little gold play. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you, you said get out of it when it broke trend. What's what? How what? what those results didn't look terrible, Wolf. But you not said, good enough to push it back up. Yeah, That's the yeah. problem, right? So mm -hmm. why get back into it? Why be in there? Yeah, just well, no, just uh, you know, there's a few good hits when they're twenty meters, but yeah, no, not not enough to. No, uh, not enough so. to get it back into the spotlight for investors. Well, if any of you, uh, again, we keep laughing about the share price action, but again, it looked pretty good two weeks ago. What's wrong with that? And they got FDA. We laughed, we? But we are just, we got our egg on our faces. Dave. This is obviously, you know, a, co a company that's kicking goals, uh, FDA approval today. So huge, huge moment for, for any of you. Well done to them. And, you know, for the end of the day, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the whole sector. We need more winners in the biotech space for Australia to take, you know, to be taken a bit more seriously. Um, so well done to them. I just, I mean, I'm wondering because I don't follow the story what the implications are now, cash flow wise, uh, how much it means to them, you know, red syndrome, how big is it in the US? I've got no, no idea about anything of that. So um, I think over the next few weeks, months, we'll probably find out where it's going to be heading. But yeah, I'm still liking my little story, and that's Tilix, where also it had some uh, FDA approvals. Okay. I was looking to look. I can't remember. God, let's not quote me on that. I, I don't want to have more egg on my face. <laughs> well, uh, well, I don't think they did get any approvals, Wolf. They, 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 they've got some cash flows out of their products. So I think it's in Australia, off memory. 
Right, okay. Are you telling us? Uh... Oh my God, I, I can't get this wrong. I can't get this wrong. I'm going to look at an idiot. All right, go on. Tell us what was it. Well, what, what's this about? Because they're down two percent. No, no, don't worry about that. There, 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 there's no announcement. It's just you know, for me, I like it, the TLX because of the cash flows. They're improving cash flows with the with the products that they've got. So I'm okay. I'm quite happy. All right. Um, anyway, uh, PSI. Uh, you know, we put this on as a buy. It hasn't come through yet. Yeah. Uh, what's the, what's going on there? Uh, they, the announcement was to what two things, right? One was they completed one of the one of the acquisitions they've had, and the other was a new acquisition that they just made. So, um, you know, again, that's how these guys grow. AUB, PSI, SDF, um, a lot of the growth is through acquisitions. So for them, looks all right, Dave. I'm still holding this. If I'm in this, I'm not selling this at all. Okay, and uh, now this is one story that we spoke about earlier, which I do think sounds really interesting, is LAU. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, it's got a good chart. It doesn't seem expensive. But one of their um, major... Main yeah. ...has gone broke, and uh, it could be getting a, a lot of that work. Excellent yeah. for them. So, you know, because the main competitor gets, gets broke, it's someone who's got a feeling to, to do their job, right, for the stuff that they've had. And LAU just talked about it. They didn't obviously mention it by name because it wouldn't not, it wouldn't be fair. So I know who it is. It's actually Scotts, uh, which I think they were on the news that they failed. Um, and LAU and probably, you know, something like a KSC, maybe CXL will be stepping in. Sorry, CLX will be probably stepping in and um, taking some of this work um, themselves. So it's good news for LAU, of course. Um, I'm still liking them. You know, oh, so cheap, Dave. Good dividends. I love, and the thing is, this is the other thing that I've been thinking this morning about this fallout in the tech space, right? All the tech space, thinking, where else would you put your money? Back into the safety of value and dividends, right? Yeah. So absolutely, I'm still loving this space. So LAU for me, I'll take it. And um, yeah, definitely. And Wolf, they're also the signature bank, which was affected mm -hmm. by the uh, crypto. They're going to protect uh, yep, investors. Same thing. Yep, same thing. Okay. All right. Listen, it it does for me. It's uh, it's it it is incredible, isn't it? How they uh... you wouldn't think in this day and age it would you would get to that stage, but they, we can still do it. See, you, you think GFC will can never happen again, and you know most likely will never happen again because the regulations are much better, oversight's much better, and all these things are much better, and the banks are actually much more better capitalized than they were back in the GFC days. But you can still get failures like this. Look at this. It just gives you a little slap on the face going, don't get too complacent, buddy. All right. Well, if I just have a quick look, there wasn't much on Einstein's. I thought there was very few shares that were really trendy. I think maybe the, the nicest uh, chart was this uh, KSC. I think it looks very strong on the way up, maybe up to that $3. Yep. Uh, I, IAG had a little buy signal. Haven't gone through yet, but I think uh, it could have a good week. Uh, West Farmers. Again, I thought looked okay. SNL looked didn't look bad, uh, and of course, uh, with the client, with the you know the worry over the weekend, we just said you know have a look at gold. Um, yeah. Gold started, and I think uh, you might see gold come down a bit, but I think by the end of the week, possibly you're going to see this uh, gold move uh, keep moving. Dave, now, but you know what the other thing is, I think if you are sitting on a nice little profit, probably also take it, you know, because you just don't know with gold whether it goes for a few days, whether it goes for a few weeks, whether it goes for a few months. Um, so if you are nervous, you're making some money, take a profit. Yeah, I don't think anyone's taking a profit just yet, Wolf, unless they bought it uh, a while yeah, back. Yeah, I know. But, but you know, if, you, if you are getting some profits at the end of the week, by the say, for example. But this is what's interesting, Wolf. Look exactly, at this. isn't right. it? This is like, this is... Aussie gold, the price of Aussie gold. Now, look at why did you sell that? I mean, Aussie, you know, they're, they're making the same money they were as gold was, you know, this is possibly slightly over, but this is more or less near record record gold price in Aussie dollar terms. If you so, saw this as a chart, just don't worry, you didn't even know it was gold, you'd be buying this up, wouldn't you? Well, you'd think so. I mean, it, and, you know, look at in, in US dollars, it still yeah. looks pretty yeah. respectful but Aussie gold looks fantastic and know. you know if you look at something like Northern Star which was trading at $16 when the gold price was up there and they're still at yeah. nine you, you think they could go to 12 yeah I'm, I'm not being sort of greedy are you greedy I'm, you think they'd be 12 I mean you know yeah. and and if gold goes keeps on going up uh, yeah they maybe get to 13 or 14 it it just seems 
it doesn't quite make it doesn't you know look at and sort of deg you think would go on with it uh pru is slightly different because it's sort of obviously it's uh in africa and it's, it doesn't have such a uh, it's not such a line to the aussie gold price more the us dollar gold price but bgl and obviously newcrest so all these i think are well worth having a look at this week and wolf when did gold have the the most amazing run ever between 2008 and 2013 I'll put the put the chat on. Let's have a look. Yeah, I have to. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't got it back that long, but uh, if you, fair enough. No, well, if you if you hold on, I'll I'll, I'll go on. Uh, I will hold on, uh, and I'm just going to quickly refer back to um, this morning what's actually happening. So, look, like I said, it's not bad, is it? I mean, we're we're looking so ugly this morning, and we're down 0.64, and it, you know, it's it's still decently down 45 points, but it could have been disastrous this morning. So. I'm I'm okay with it, and uh, we've got our still our favourites doing okay. LAU is up, XRF is up, IGL is up. So some of the stocks that we follow, doing all right. There you go. Well, there's a there's a monthly, so you can mm -hmm. see how well gold did really from 2008 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, had a really lovely move over that period of time, mm -hmm. and you know what was it? What was that period of time? GFC collapsing banks, collapsing infrastructure. People get nervous. They go to gold. Yeah. Um, so if you if we see more of what we're seeing, uh, gold could could keep on going. Yep. Uh, on that note, Wolfie, no buys today. But uh, you know, would you know? It's, just, it's that sort of week, Wolf. It's going to be you know, unless we see an it's absolute. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be an interesting week, but unless we see an absolute gem of a buy, uh, possibly maybe the most interesting one would be LAU, but we're in it anyway. Um, you know, if they're getting going to pick up a lot of work from Scots, you know, long may that continue. It could be, a, it could give that stock a real bolster. So, you know, if I was going to buy stocks, first I'd be looking at LAU, I'd look at KSC, which is maybe a similar business, correct? Um, yeah, you, I, you know, that, but like we said, I mean, if you are looking at buying some stuff, it's still probably be gravitating towards those value Australia centric stocks, right? Where they've got a dividend as well. So you can see those ones holding up today as well. You've got the LAUs of the world, XRFs of the world. Um, okay, IGL. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the stuff that's still doing okay. All right. On that note, thank you very much, Wolfie. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.